Guys, Dan Hendrickson here. We're at Torquay Golf Club. We're in the studio, but we will be heading out on the golf course. And we're going to do a little review for you today. It's the Shrixen ZX7 driver. And I've got to say, first looks absolutely beautiful. So I've got Lee and Lester with me. We're all going to have a hit with this driver, give you some numbers, take it on the golf course, and let you know what's going on with this new Shrixen driver. If you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Loads more golf content coming your way, but let's get out and hit the Strixon driver. Made our way out into the golf course with the Strixon ZX7. It's a windy day here at Torquay, so we're going to really put it through its paces out here to see how we can control that flight. We're also going to get some numbers in the studio, so we'll hit some shots out here first, and then we'll take you to the studio, see how it's performing in there, and then we'll uh, give you our sort of thoughts on how it's uh, looking as well. What are you doing? Look, what what are you doing? Just trying to watch Lee's ball flight. <laughs> are you waiting for that to happen? So we're out here on the fourth hole into wind. Yeah, into that left to right wind. A serious wind. Yeah. You have not taken your hands no. off that head cover, have it's, you? It's a little bit chilly today. It's uh, it's in November, and I've just literally found it's almost like a glover. I'm going to call your, it a glover. Put your hand in there. Look. Put your hand in there. Look. Oh, oh, a double, little double oh, glover. Nice, isn't it? Okay. Sure so, that's a good point, isn't it? Because ultimately, there's a lot of thought that goes into these head covers. Mm -hmm. And I think when you're reviewing a driver, you should actually just talk briefly about the head cover as well. Yeah. I mean, what's, your, a... what's your thoughts, Benny? Oh, that is a 10 out of 10 for me on head covers. Yeah, is it? You can just pull it off the top. I mean, that's easy. Is it then fleece lined to... inside? Yeah, fleece lined. Oh, it's fleece lined there's, been no, there's been no expense spared on the, the development of this head cover, as far as I'm concerned. And it's big enough that it, it doesn't oh. get... It's because some of these what's head this? covers can be what's quite this? tight. Can't Brand new they? head cover. Brand new head cover. Look at that. And then, what's this? Hold on the end, please, Lee. There you go. Oh, How easy look is that? At that? That is easy. So yeah. when you're caddying for Lee, it's so yeah. easy to pull that head cover. <laughs> exactly. Off when you're shouting for right for Lee. We do go through when we're in the shot. We we <laughs> we sometimes do struggle a little bit with getting head covers on new yeah. drivers, don't we? Or new head covers on new drivers. I like that. Um, but that's straight out of the packet, and that yeah. is working nicely for you. Uh, made in China. Made in China. Yeah. As if it wouldn't be. Right, well, you switch me off here. Lee, tell what? me about your first impressions of this driver when you look down at it over the golf course. I absolutely love it. And the reason is, is because it reminds me so much of my Sub-Zero. Does it? Similar shape, with the, like the, the tall shape. Callaway Sub-Zero, you're talking about? The, sorry, yeah, the Callaway Maverick Sub-Zero. Yeah. The lipstick around the side is almost the same, except this is red, mine's orange. Okay. And then obviously the carbon crown. It, if you didn't know it was a Strixon, you'd think it was a Callaway, if that really? makes sense. That's what it feels like to me. The top feels Callaway-ish, the way it's dark into carbon and then the lipstick around the outside. Do you think that's a good thing from Strixon's point of view? Well, for me, I think it is because I think it, I like it. Yeah. I like the look of it and it's, it's a proven good look isn't it it's one colorway i've stuck with for years and if i'm being perfectly honest i think this is the best looking swixon driver they've ever released well let's see how high it goes <laughs> that i can test that i can test right. lee just hang on a minute there's a plane up there <laughs> 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 oh, get ready to shout for right Yeah, that is high. That is extremely high there. That is now coming out. Started kind of down the right half of the fairway and then moving over to the right hand Got side. It. Got it. It sounded pretty carbon. Got out the window though. Oh. Did you get it in the good spot? Yeah. Out the middle. Right, lovely. I think the face might have been open um, a bit. Feeling though, felt all right. <laughs> felt good. Feels great. Yeah, it feels just it feels just as good as my current driver with the the carbon, same similar sound. I think the Mavic sounds better, but. Yes, yeah, it felt really, really good. I'm sorry you had to watch that, um, <laughs> follow that. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry you had to follow Brilliant. that, Bernie, but it's your go next. Cool. Brilliant. I'm not going to get that ball back. Eh? Has it come down yet? No, it's just come down now. Cool. First impressions. Okay. I like it. It's very rounded um, and it feels, quite, it feels quite deep, whereas the one I'm using at the moment is more dragged back. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I would, as a, as a slight off put for me, is because of the, the actual head appearing to be quite small, to me the shaft then feels long, so it actually feels quite a long driver. 
It's a standard. It's a it standard a stand, forty-five. Yeah, it's inch driver, everything isn't it? standard about it. It's forty-five and a quarter inches, I think. Oh, is it? According to that sticker there. Okay. <laughs> but no, it just feels a little bit longer. But I, I initially, I like the actual. Um, I like all the cosmetics on it. I like all the um, looks on the bottom. What yeah, about like from the, the top back? behind the ball then? Yeah, I think Lee's right. It does look very much like the Callaway current driver. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's just pleasant looking. I do like it. Nothing, nothing doesn't. It's not wowing you, is no, it? No, it's not wowing me. I mean, no. it's not. You're, you're struggling for words to talk about. Well, it, really, I mean, aren't you, you? they've almost created a driver that's exactly the same as the Callaway one. So that it's nothing different. It's nothing unusual. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be. There's nothing extra tech in it compared to. Have you to, played a Strix on driver before? I haven't. No. No. I've used the ball before, but never yeah. used any of the clubs. Okay. Well, let's see how you get on with it okay. into wind, Bernie. Watch this. Ready for this? Ready for this, Lee? See that fairway? This is going down it. What's this? Where's that? Didn't see it. Right hand side of the fairway. Right hand side of the fairway. Hit the tree? Is that okay? Didn't hit the tree. Didn't hit the tree, it's in the, from the edge of the fairway. I've got to say, the difference between listening to the sound from what you got compared to what Lee got, Lee's definitely almost sound a little bit more carbony, so a yeah. little bit more fuddy, whereas that was tinny. tinny. Yeah. How did it feel to you? Yeah, it did. I mean, you've hit the nail on the head, really. It did sound quite tinny, almost hollowy. I don't know whether that's because my strike maybe wasn't quite central. Okay. Um, but the shape was quite nice, good flight on it. Could live with that, definitely. Right, golf professional. Yes. Show us how to hit a fairway. So I think? think absolutely Lee is bang on. That is literally like a Callaway. When I look at that, I look at that little bit of uh, lipstick that runs around the back of it. But I've not been a massive fan of Strix and drivers over the years, purely not from a performance point of view, because I have actually found a couple when I've done reviews in the past where they've really performed quite well for me. But visually, I always struggle to get the club to square up properly. Like when I put it down, it always wants to either sit quite towed in or slightly open. I've never got one to sit really nice and flush behind the ball. However, this one, is sitting absolutely perfectly behind the ball. I also really like this little logo that they've kind of put on here. I'm not sure if that's the same as what they've used in the past, but that is looking quite nice. It's quite, obviously it's quite central on the club face, which is always quite good, but it just, the logo on it just frames up the ball quite nicely for me. Can we hit it? That's the question, into wind. Well, that wind's died. No right, wind now. Still, don't worry, it's still there. No, it's still there. Over. Oh yeah, a nice low bullet. That is easy. That is a little low bullet into wind. Caught that a fraction in the heel, a bit low and in the heel. But to be honest with you, it's the type of shot that I would look to play down this hole. Start it down the left hand side, hit it nice and low into the wind and let it drift back. The great thing is when I hit it down in that low point, it didn't rise on me. Normally I can hit them a bit low, get a bit spinny and it starts to rise up on the wind. But that, yeah, it felt quite tinny, but not too offensive. It was quite a nice feel. Okay, Lee's ball's just over there. You can see Lee in the middle of the other fairway. Right, Bernie has found his. Yours didn't hit the tree, did it? No, it did land on the rough, but yeah, it's all right, I'll take that's it. Not, that's not a bad position to no. be in, is it, towards the green there? So a decent decent yeah. position for you. And then I have found middle of the fairway, so I would be absolutely perfectly happy with that drive. Did exactly what I wanted it to do, kind of down this hole. So all in all, to be able to shape the ball how I want to do it, off the club face, this driver's working pretty much spot on. I feel like we need a little bit of a competition. We do like a little bit of competitive golf, us boys. So I'm feeling a downwind, downwind. a longest drive up here. Yes. Can we do wildest drive? Have you no. got to hit the fairway? No. <laughs> no? Just well, of course you do. You've got to hit the fairway. Right, I'm giving this if, you give it, if you're going to win a longest drive in a pro-am or a competition, the chances are you'd have had to have hit the fairway, wouldn't you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're going to go with fairway. All right, good. Right. Okay, longest drive, got to hit the fairway. Let's, yeah. It's definitely downwind, yeah. Ready for this? 
I'm, I'm always ready. Ready, Lee? Yeah. Oh, yes. He is walking after it. Is that, ho is that holding up in the fairway? Oh, that might have oh, just bounced right. off. Missed it right. Is that missed right of the fairway? Yeah. Cool, good, that was though. a well struck shot. Like that. How did that feel? Good. Yeah. That's good, is That's it? As you're, good as it you're, gets. you're happy with that? Yeah, it felt good. Yep. Man of, <laughs> Man of very few <laughs> words. How good is that? Yep. 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 Do yep. you like that? Yep. Lee, he has he yourself. has literally hit a bomber up there. I'm not sure you're gonna keep up with him when he when he gets that. fired up. He is not getting past that. All right. No oh, look that out. Look this, out. This could go anywhere. <laughs> that was a proper Bernie Big Balls, that one. You watch that green key was shed. Right, Lee, look at how he's stepped up. He's widened his starts right out. He's going for this one. Oh, that is it. I don't even need to have a hit. That is an absolute bomber. Yeah, now that is in the fairway. That is in the fairway. There it is. Well struck. Yeah, right out the middle again. Right out the middle. Quite like this club. Shiny. <laughs> right, DH. Right, you better, you on. You knock it past that then, shall I we? I am not getting past, well, I'm not even going to get past yours and yours is in the rough, but I'm definitely not going to get past Lee's, am I? But I will no. try and get a bit of a bomber going. Widen that stance. I, I, well, I've got... I've Wait got on a, your right side. I'm going to I'm gonna try and hit a bit of a, bit of a drawy hook. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. That is everything I have. That's a and proper high toe strike as well. Pretty good. That is that is as good as I've got. Do you think it's past Lee's? To be fair, I've hit it absolutely where I would need to hit it from there. Just a little bit high, a little bit in the toe. Before we actually get the results of this longest drive, because that was impressive from you, Let's just go back to the studio where we hit a few shots earlier and look at the numbers of what this drive is actually giving all three of us. So we're going to share with you the numbers of what Lee's getting. Very good numbers to start with. Now this setup of this driver, ignore the bottom number here at this moment. We'll explain what's going on with that in just a minute. But these first five numbers that you've got here, and these are the averages on those down here. So 9.5 head straight out the box yep. and the 6.5 hazardous smoke shaft which is basically the same as what you're using yep. at this moment in time but just in a Callaway head. So if we go on the numbers that coming out of the box are, you've got 157 in the ball speed, mm -hmm. so not bad. You're launching at 17.5, now you are a high launch yeah, yeah. of the ball. Your spin numbers are at 2789 which is possibly a little high but not but not too high. That's a little high of what you would want to probably put on the golf course yeah, yeah. to get your maximum distance, but it's not bad from that and probably quite controllable. 51 yards high and an average carry of 268. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's slightly down, isn't it, on what you would be getting from your driver? Yeah, if I'm if I'm playing normal golf, I'm expecting sort of 275 as a as an yeah. average, and then obviously there's the bomb in there if I need to get it out. Yeah. So then what we did is we then change the club around so we fitted Lee into a better spec on the driver so we kept the same head we kept the same shaft but we just lofted it down instantly first shot out the back and we only took the one shot because it was a good shot was 163 from the ball speed off the face so that's an increase of nearly six, what, six mile an hour off the face quicker yeah your launch is still quite high you're two, three in the spin, so we've reduced your spin down by 400 revs, which is absolutely spot on. You're peaking out, and, well, you're peaking out at 55 yards high, which is just standard, a little yeah. bit, which is pretty much standard, but just a yeah. little bit higher than your average, but 291, so there's yeah. your bomber. Yeah, yeah. So you get this fit right for you, and this driver is performing as good as anything you've hit. Yeah, yeah, completely. You know, this is what, this is how I work, high launch, low spin, it's yeah. how I play golf. Yeah. Um, it's uncontrolled at times, but that's the way that's I play the bomber, golf. Yeah. That's the bomber. Right, numbers time, Lester. If you look, we've got the bottom three, and I'll explain what this is in just a moment. Very similar to what we did with Lee, but bottom three are the ones that we fitted you into, and I've taken them out of the averages down here. But if we look at your averages with what you're getting, 9.5, 6.5 uh, hazardous smoke shafts, so the same spec as what Lee tested first. Yeah, that's what I've got in my driver currently as well. That exactly, shaft. exactly the same shaft. Yeah, so yeah. felt pretty much the same when you were swinging it. Yeah, correct. 
So 156 in the ball speed off the face, which I would say for someone like you, swinging at probably 112, 113 is about right on an average for yeah. you. You can get a bit more out of it, but pretty good. Launching though at 14.7. Fraction higher probably yeah, than one. I, from previous fits that I've done with you, your yeah. normal launch is at around 13 or 12 yeah. and a half to 13, which is 13. about right. And then 27, 27 to 28 in the spin on an average. So again, a little bit higher than I'd it's want. a little bit high, yeah. but if you remember going back to your Cobra driver, it was yeah. actually about where you had it, which yeah. made you play, you felt the best golf. Yeah. So quite controllable in the spin. And then 43 yards high on an average, and going out at 267 on an average carry yeah. from what you're getting there. Yes, you have the odd one at 275 and 270, but an average of 267. So yeah. pretty good out the box, I yeah. would say. Very a very gameable position there. Yeah. So then we did the fit for you and we knocked you down in the loft, didn't we? So we're yeah. trying to get his loft down, which will hopefully maybe reduce his spin slightly and get that ball out there a little bit further. A bit similar to what we did with Lee. I was also quite keen to get your launch down a fraction. However, I'll explain why that's not happened in just a minute. So average ball speed, you're still at 156. Yeah. So it's not changed from your average out the box at no. 9.5. And your launch is still up at 15.9. So it's still quite oh, high in the yeah. launch. However, look at your spin. So you've yeah. gone from 27 stroke 28 to now 2000. Yeah. So now you're living life on a knife edge. And the reason why Leicester hit three shots compared to Lee hitting the one is because he was hitting fairway. He was actually found a club that he really liked, so he was just wanted to hit more. But 42 yards high on average, so pretty similar to what you're getting out of the yeah. one out of the box, should we say. But your carry now gone up from 268 average yeah. to now 284. If I was gaming this club, I would probably want to probably increase maybe half a degree, three quarters of a degree, just to bring, I know it will bring the carry down slightly, but it will get this spin up into 2-2. Two, two. 2-3, which is where I'd be more comfortable with. Well, I think you could actually do that from the driver and you getting used to the driver. And the reason yeah. I say that is because what's happened is your strike location yeah. has gone higher mm -hmm. on the face. So as we've pushed that face forwards, so we've taken loft off the club, it's actually helped move his strike location a little bit higher in the face, which if you think about the curvature of the face, the yeah. sort of rolling the bulge of the face, it's got hit the higher point of the face, which has then launched it higher yeah. off the face. So you've gone, you're, you're now at like 14 millimeters high, whereas yeah. before you were more like seven or eight millimeters high. So yeah. we've, we, you're launching it higher because you're hitting it higher on the face, and ultimately that's bringing the spin down, which is why you're getting that extra bit of bit of yardage, and also why you're getting that spin quite low. Yeah. I think if you learn to strike that club just a fraction lower you'd see that spin just pick up a little bit and you might lose a few yards, but yeah. you'd probably get a bit more control over it. My numbers then. So again, if you look at the bottom three, I've just x them out here. So we've taken those out of the um, averages because those are my fitted numbers and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But out of the box, 9.5. Now I moved into a 6.0 hazardous, which is my kind of spec. Um, shaft that I would use in any driver that I've been using in the last couple of years, so that's the right shaft for me. I, my ball speed on average is 153, so if I was comparing that to my current driver, which is at around 154, 155, it's a fraction low. My launch though at 15.1, again, a little high, so not ideally what I'm trying to look for when I'm being specced up to a driver that perfectly fit my game. If you come over to the spin, I'm averaging at 2.8 in the spin, which Actually, for me, to get the most out of a driver, I need to get it down at like 2.2 to 2.4. That will give me my, my best carry yardages if I get all the other bits right. Averaging 43 yards high, which is kind of about where I'm at, maybe just a fraction higher than where I'd want to be. And then an average carry of 2.59, which, to be fair, 2.59 on average on the golf course, I'd probably take that. I can probably get it out there at sort of 2.65 to 2.70, with my current driver in the way I've spec'd it up. Now I did a fit for myself, and I'm just gonna to explain to you what I changed in the driver. So Lee, with regards to the driver, what did we change for me on this particular one? Okay, so obviously it was in the standard loft. Yes. Um, so we reduced loft, and then in the weights here, we've obviously, it was out of the box, eight grams in the heel, four grams in the toe. Okay. So we swapped them over, put the eight gram in the heel, 
because you prefer the weight in the heel and you hit it more out the toe. Yeah. So get that weight there and then we thought we'd give you another go at it. So basically what we've done is that out of the box in this particular setup we realised that the weight is in the heel of the driver which I was hitting shots feeling like I was striking it a little bit in the heel. So we are, I asked Lee to move it over into the toe so I've got more weight in the toe which will enable me to track CG into the toe position which is where I like to strike it and get the best numbers from it. Now, if you look at my numbers here, when I fitted myself, so I've de-lofted it, remember, to try and bring that launch just a little bit lower, but ball speed now at 155. If you compare that to 153 than what I was getting out of the, the, the normal setup, so I've increased that, I've come up to where I would expect to be from my driver. My launch now is at 12.9, which is pretty much spot on for what I need. And then I've dropped my spin from 28 to now 24, so I've dropped off 400 revs, which is, again, absolutely what I would want to see from a driver. If you look at peak heights, I've brought that down to 35 yards high from around 40, 41. So again, that's pretty good. And then my carry distance gone up now from 259 up to 268. So I've pretty much picked up nine extra yards by fitting myself correctly for this driver. Tell me about the spec on these drivers then, Lee. Right, so the ZX7 has got what's called, as you can see it around the side here, this thing called a rebound frame. Obviously you've got your sweet spot in the, in the face, but around the framework itself is like a little compression sort of structure, which is designed to focus more energy into the ball on center strikes. So center strikes will give you faster ball speed. So the other thing it has is a 15% larger carbon crown. And what that's designed to do is bring weight a little bit lower to increase MOI and forgiveness, even though this is the sort of like the tall version of the, the two drivers. Um, the weights are interchangeable. What comes with it is a four gram and an eight gram, and you can move them between heel and toe. So, you know, when you're fitting, you can, you can move strike around a little bit with it. But you've also, um, as a fitting kit, you get lots of different weights. So the actual fitting options for weights are, are sort of like vast, really. So pretty good numbers from the studio with, with the driver once we went through that fitting. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of important message out of any of this whenever you test the driver is that it's the, the important part is actually the fitting part of it. Yeah, to totally agree because on initial um, initial numbers, I would, there's no way I'd even consider that driver and I'd be saying, don't like the driver, it performs worse than what I've got now. Yeah. But once you fitted me correctly and once we all did the fitting, the numbers were then marrying up quite nicely against my current driver. I think it just goes to show the, the difference between fitting and off the shelf. It's like the first time we used it, was we've effectively walked into a shop and bought it off the shelf. And the second set of numbers were we'd gone and seen a fitter and had it spec'd correctly and the difference was really big. Night and day. Yeah. And ultimately people are going to say, well, you should be now using the driver on the golf course of what you've been fitted for. And yeah, absolutely right. But we haven't got that many drivers and we no. haven't got that much time. So ultimately we're out here now looking at how it looks and how it feels from that side of it, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, correct. Who has won the longest drive? Is it an awkward one? Well, it, not really awkward. It's to be expected because I'm a little bit longer, aren't I? So <laughs> it was but we're straighter. But you're straighter. <laughs> but not on this occasion though, Bernie, no. because this is, no. this is my ball just here and I am actually just off the fairway, which I was a little bit surprised about. I thought it might have just Don't hang on like there. Back, Bernie, yours, where further. are you? You're further up, aren't you? Yeah, same line, just a little bit further up, but we're not on the fairway we're and not. we're not as long either. Lee, so. go on, run over and just stand by your ball, go on. And there he is, there, there he is. is, the waving boy. Pretty good driver though, wasn't he? Yeah, every dog has his day. They do, absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely right. So there you go, there's our thoughts of the ZX7 driver by Strixon. I've got to say, over the years, I've kind of shied away from Strixon, but first impressions of this driver and its performance is definitely a thumbs up from me. What do you think, Lester? I definitely think so. The numbers sort of marry up with my current driver. Uh, if I was looking to replace or upgrade, then that would be a consideration. You would definitely be I'd looking definitely to put that it, yeah. in the bag, potentially. And yourself, Lee? Love it. Absolutely love it. It looks like, it looks like the club I'm using, so from an eye point of view, it's yeah. perfect. Performance out on the course, um, you know, it's just as good as my, my, my current driver. 
and then the numbers are exactly the same, so I easily swap. And just looking at that driver right now from that kind of visual there, I mean, the shop appeal on the shelf is, it's got it, isn't it? Yeah. It, it kind of ticks all the boxes. And I, I know we always look down on the driver and we're trying to get a visual for what that looks like, but actually when you put that on the shelf in any pro shop with the lights on it, it's going to look as good as anything, yeah. isn't it? It and really is. the face has got like little quirky lines on as well, which are, yeah. you know, which is what people like these days. It allows so. it to frame the ball up, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? It's, a, it's a certainly a good club. Well done, Strixon. Well done, Strixon. There you go. So there you go. There is our review of the ZX7 driver by Strixon. It's a tick from all of us, really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It really is. I hope you like what we're doing with this channel with regards to reviews. Obviously, we've got a mid-handicap golfer, we've got a scratch golfer and a pro reviewing these uh, clubs for you. And I'd like to hear your comments on that. Don't forget, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. And we'll look forward to catching up with you again soon.